Hey miners, Mining King here. Today, we're going to be taking apart a RTX 3080 Ti. So, let's get right into it. This video is brought to you by Hero Miners Flux Pool, where until the end of September, there are absolutely no mining or parallel asset fees. Also, your parallel asset fees are paid instantly with each unlocked block. Wait. There's more. Hero Miners has given away 500 flux to a lucky winner, so now would be a great time to mine flux at HeroMiners.com. Details of the giveaway are in the description below. Due to the nature of flux, a complete 0% fee results in 30% more earnings when compared to other flux pools. You can check them out at flux.heroMiners.com. Come see firsthand what makes Hero Miners a great place to mine. All right, guys. So we have a RTX 3080 Ti Asus Tough from Hawk. It's one of the cards I'll be repatting again. Let's go ahead and let's get this card on my test bench and get some initial uh, results on the core and the memory so we have like a base to work with so that way we can know if we actually making the card worse or better. So let's go ahead and put it on my test bench and let's let it heat soak. So we're over here at my Hive OS where we've been testing this Asus Tough 3080 Ti. Now, once again, this is one of Hawk's GPUs, and um, it's in need of some repadding here. We're almost at the 110C mark. Uh, I wanted to do a little bit more of a long-term test with this, so we are at about about a day. We're at 21 hours here, so it's been it's heat soaked for quite some time, and we're at 56C on the core and 108C on the memory. So we're just right underneath that 110 mark so it is extremely extremely hot um we definitely need to do some repadding um so just once again to reiterate though you will see a core jump in temperature when you do use 20 watt per kelvin thermal pads because you're going to be adding more heat to the heat sink which is going to spread out more so that heat will spread over to the core so you will see core temperatures rise so keep that in mind when you guys are doing repast uh when you guys are doing repadding so let's go ahead and let's turn the rig off let's get the gpu out let's go ahead and do a tear down and check this gpu out we're gonna repaste and repad this thing for hawk let's see if we can't get some better temperatures on his memory okay we're back I did let it run for about a day. I wanted to see how much the temperatures moved. It's been pretty steady at 56C at 108C on the memory, right? So 56C core, 108 memory. I would say after the hour mark, it was like at 106C on the memory and 55 on the core. So it didn't it didn't move a whole lot after a day. That's a so so we have a base of what we need to you know what we know the card is at right now so we can know if we're making the card worse or better right by doing this repadding repacing if we need to make adjustments in our thermal pad thickness so you will need so these are some of the tools you're going to need for this job is you will need a uh, digital caliber you're obviously going to need some thermal paste and you're going to need some thermal pads so um if you guys, like I said before, there'll be an affiliate link down below for GPU risers. Um, it'll just give me a small kickback and it doesn't cost you guys anything extra. So the other things you're gonna need is, I'm using my iFixit uh, you know, toolkit here. Um, you can just use some, some screwdrivers you guys have. You don't have to buy an iFixit toolkit. I'll, I'll leave a link down below. It's an Amazon affiliate link. You guys can use it if you want. It doesn't cost you anything extra. So I will put a link for the iFixit toolkit. I use the iFixit. I really like, the reason I like it and a lot of people like it, it's not because it's expensive and nice. What it is, is, is these bits are actually really high quality bits. And if you ever have issues with them, they'll just send you out new ones. So it's a great company, great customer service. That That's the kind of stuff I look for in companies. So to me, I'm willing to pay extra for better customer service, and that's just me personally. So um, so now that we have some of the stuff that we are going to need, um, and I'll, I'll leave links, like I said before, for all the stuff down below. Um, so let's go ahead and let's start tearing apart this card. Um, so if you guys aren't, have never, I've never taken one of these apart, 
but I have done some research on it. So, you know, like watch videos, kind of read some Reddit stuff, you know, because I don't have one of these personally. So, um, but I'm comfortable taking apart GPUs. But if you look inside of here, see if I can't, let's go this way. Okay. You could see that there is another set of heat sinks in here, right? See the heat pipe? This card, this ASUS stuff actually has two heat sinks. One is the main one, right, for everything. And then the other one is actually sitting on top of the memory chips to help dissipate more heat. So I'm curious as to why it's not, I don't know, like it should be, it should be cooling it more. I'm wondering why it's only at 108. So let's go ahead and let's start tearing apart this card. I think this card is going to have a lot more screws. So that means it's going to be a lot more work. It's going to be a little more difficult than the last 3080 Ti. So from what I could tell, and I haven't taken all the screws off this yet, is some of these screws go through here, through the PCB to the cooler. And these are going to, it looks like they're all spring loaded. And then there's some additional screws, right? You can't get to from this side to release the back plate here and I'm going to try to use my I'm going to be using my flashlight because I want to see if there's any thermal pads behind here because if there's not there's no reason to separate this from the PCB because if there's no thermal pads back here there's really no reason to, to disassemble it any further right so I will let you guys know but you do have you have two screws here on the bottom one two got one here one directly across and then you actually, and then you have all of these as well, all these other little screws that you have in your clamp. So the, the clamp right here is also spring loaded. They have four screws with springs on them as well. So we're just gonna set that aside, leave the screws on, on that right there. So when you're taking apart a car too, it's very important to find cables. Okay, so there's some of them have RGB, some of them are for fans, some of them. So you want to pay attention because this is obviously where you're going to need to disconnect some cables possibly to get it out. But this this GPU looks pretty laid up because it's the cables look to be on one side. So you should be able to just rotate this off and be able to work on it from what I can see. So once again, when you're taking apart and trying to separate a GPU, especially one that has never... Um, a GPU that's never been taken apart, it can be kind of tough. It may seem like it's like concrete or stuck. So what you want to do is you want to grab the PCB and the cooler, and you kind of just want to shift it back and forth. Very Not like really get in there, but just kind of trying to move it. And what it does is, is it shifts it like this, and it kind of just breaks it up a little bit to make it easier for you. Well, that was pretty easy. So this card is extremely not too bad to work on so far they have the cables all right here and you're able just to open it up so it's actually really easy you don't the only way you need to disconnect cables is if you're going to actually clean inside of this heat sink which the heat sink the card itself looks extremely clean it doesn't look like you even need to clean it at all i might just clean his fans a little bit because they're they're a little dusty i'll do them a little favor but um, other than that, though, the car looks very clean. And also, I like to have a magnetic dish just to keep my screws together. I don't don't want to lose these small ones. It gets really scary. I'll bring the card up so you guys can... I'll try to put it on the main camera because the other camera that's pointing down is just a C920, so it's not very well, very good. But let's go ahead. This is his core. And you can see that there is a few hot spots, and it's a little crusty on the inside, right? So... He's, it's definitely been running in a hotter environment, which I know he's in Florida, and they're kind of like me in Arizona, where they have a lot of heat, especially in the summertime. Let's go ahead and let's try to get off this secondary uh, cooler here. This is really interesting. I haven't seen another company do this yet. I actually have another set of heat pipes and, you know, and another heat sink for the memory itself. So you really want to try and be gentle because you don't want to rip your pads because then you can't, I mean, you can still measure them, but you want to try to keep them intact. Because you got you got to have at least one to measure. So I got I lifted on. You want to get some strong points here. So see how there's all this stuff connected here. You want to pick up on the strong points. You don't want to really touch this fins. The fins bend extremely easy. So try not to touch them. And there we go. And so here is the. This is the heatsink. 
as as you can see some of it is <laughs> this is really crusty as well as you can see that some of the chips and i'll bring it up to the camera the the good camera here so you guys can see so that is his thermal pads so they are definitely wore out they're definitely not good anymore they definitely have to get replaced so when you have pads like this that are like been like really in heat a lot you just you got to be really careful take them off just peel them off little bit by little bit and you just really want to try to get because you want to get a good accurate reading right so you got to be really gentle and you want to try so you can also let's see if i can't get this on camera so you see the indentations from the chips right you don't want to measure there right because it's been compressed so if you measure down here low it's those couple one thousandths of an inch will it it i've learned the hard way it does make a difference so if you're going to measure okay so you have your digital caliber here make sure you zero it out we're going to open it up now you don't want to force clamp it you don't want to crush it because then you're going to get an inaccurate reading you you kind of have to be really gentle here so these are about 1.7 okay now these these are going to have some squish and they will they will squish down they actually recommend two mil on the memory chips so that's what we're going to go with i'm going to, we're going to try this uh we're going to see how accurate this guy is and we'll be able to tell too when you push the card together you'll see right here on this side if there is a gap between this chip and this cooler if there is a gap and you can see through it, then you already know that it's too tall. So that's one thing to pay attention to is you can look this way and look to your cooler to see if there's a gap. If there's a gap, then you already know it's too big and you need to take it apart and redo it. So let's go ahead. Let's clean up these memory chips. Let's clean up the GPU um, die and the heat sink. Let's start measuring or let's start cutting. We're going to put our two mils on here over our memory chips here and here and then we'll move on to the next sizes so but these will be the pads that we will be using today so these are medical grade pads so i have used some already this is what i have left over from the last gpu i got a few other extra pieces over here so we have the first little bit of it cleaned up for the two mil now do to make it easier on yourself to for when you cut which you will need like an exacto knife or a box cutter like i use okay is you can just put it on your thermal your new pad and then you could just have like a little trace right and then you can just you just cut out around it essentially the next one that we need to work on right for this particular heat sink right because this is how this is going to sit there is one more thermal pad right here and this is what we are we're also going to be changing this to two millimeter as well so let's go ahead and let's screw back on this particular piece so that way we know that we're done okay so the next following sizes for this is going to be two mils right here in your vrms as well as this little bar right here where I'm pointing at this right here is also two mils because it goes over the heat pipe right here as well as the other set of VRMs right here is also uh, this is going to be the only off size it's going to be one and a half millimeters this one up here that goes across this bar that goes over all these little chips will be two millimeters as well so let's get some thermal paste on here and give it a test all right guys so we have it on my test bench it's been going for about 15 minutes now and the temperature's been pretty normal. It's been jumping around 53 uh, on the core, 55 on the core, 98, 100. I expect it to probably stabilize at 55, 100. Now the interesting part about this is, is the reason we didn't see a core jump on this particular model, I believe is because of that separate heat sink that is just for the GDDR6X memory. So as you noticed before with the EVGA cooler, that all the chips were cooled directly with just the one heat sink. So in, you know, that would incidentally increase the cooling throughout the whole heat sink. Whereas ASUS has tried a different approach and had two separate heat sinks, one for the memory 
and then one for the core itself. So very interesting to see these results. So we haven't really seen a core jump on this particular model. And our memory temperatures, they are about 53, you know, uh, about, or about 98C. So we were at about 108. So we've seen a reduction of 10C, which I think is pretty normal um, across the board for doing a repad job on these 3080Ti's and 3090's. So um, anyways, guys, I hope this video was informative and helpful. I hope the instructions were easy to follow along. Um, if you guys have any questions, please hit me up in the comments down below, as well as this is the Monikin giving you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time.